In this screencast, I'm going to show how to analyze the incoming and outgoing calls of a particular method. The starting point is always the call tree view. Here you find a method that you're interested in, you select it, and then you execute a call tree analysis, either for showing the cumulated call tree of all outgoing calls, or for showing the backtraces to all invocations of the selected method. Let's go for the cumulated outgoing calls first. The result of this analysis is shown in a nested view below the call tree. It's static and there are no live updates. The root of the call tree is always the method that you had selected in the call tree and this check mark here is shown to remind you of this fact. In the header we can see that there are six top level call sites that were merged together. Why does it say top level call sites and not just call sites? That's because this analysis does not accumulate recursive calls by default. If recursive calls are detected, there will be an option here to collapse the recursive calls right in this view. The benefit of this analysis is that we can now get better statistics because all invocations of the selected method have been accumulated. At the same time, we can ask the question, where has this method actually been called? And to answer this question, we return to the call tree view and calculate the backtraces for the very same method. Backtraces can also be found in the hotspots view. However, the hotspots view only cares about self times. It doesn't show the total times that you're seeing in the call tree. Let's analyze these backtraces a little. Apparently, each of these URLs here makes a call to request handler run, which in turn calls request handler perform work. Looking at the call tree and opening all these URLs here, we can verify that this is indeed the case. On a related note, the call graph offers a combined view of both incoming and outgoing calls. Switching to the call graph is easily done from all views that show call trees. Let's compare the call graph with the call tree analysis. The perform work method here has a total time of 80,697 milliseconds, which corresponds to the time that is shown in the accumulated outgoing view. However, here we have five outgoing method calls, whereas in the call graph we only have three. This is because the call graph initially hides outgoing calls below a certain threshold. And only when you click the expand node for a second time, all outgoing method calls will be shown. To analyze the times of the outgoing calls in the call graph, you have to look at the tooltips on the edges. For example, the call to mock helper runnable takes 10,858 milliseconds, which corresponds to the time that is shown in the cumulated outgoing analysis. However, in the call graph, the node for the mock helper runnable method shows a whopping 143 seconds. That's because in the call graph, each method has a single unique node, and mock helper runnable is called by a whole lot of other methods. As you can see, the method graph is completely method centric, whereas the call tree analysis limit the displayed data to a particular selected method. As always, it totally depends on the kind of problem that you're trying to solve. And it's the combination of the different perspectives and all the tools that JProfiler puts at your disposal that enable you to make your application more performant. 